Good night and welcome to Tele Islas News with the most relevant and important information of the day. Two people were assisted by the National Navy after the boat in which they were traveling was shipwrecked after attempting to evade maritime controls 11 nautical miles south of the island of San Andres. In the community sent by the institution is in a note that the assistance was given during the development of a maritime control and surveillance operation when personnel of the Coast Guard Station of San Andres was verifying a suspicious vessel that was moving south of the island towards Albuquerque. During the operation, the Coast Guard unit approached the vessel and ordered its turn of its engines and stop. However, the man ignored the orders and fled initiating a chase at the sea. Likewise, in the official report, it is made clear that the two men who were on board the vessel apparently physically and verbally attacked the members of the naval institutions and developed a Invasive maneuvers of high risk that produce the wreck of the motorboat and their fall into the sea. Immediately, the military personnel assisted the two men emergency and brought them to safety on board the Coast Guard unit, giving them first aid and referring them to the dock of Coast Guard Station, Captain Swanmail Corps in San Andres. Subsequently, and in coordination with the regulatory center of the emergencies and urgencies, the two rescue were taken to the departmental hospital to receive specialized attention. The Coast Guard Station of San Andres is compliance with American Maritime Regulation file a protest known with the port captaincy of San Andres for not complying with the authority request. On the other hand, the Colombian Navy has protected the lives of 119 migrants in waters of the archipelago so far in the month of August. This was announced by the authorities in the last hours. During the month of August, Colombian Navy units managed to safeguard the life of 119 irregular migrants of different nationalities who were illegally transported in boats in the waters of San Andres and the insular region, apparently bound for Central America. It is noteworthy that 13 people were placed at the disposal of the competent authorities for the alleged crime of human trafficking along with the boats, engines, cell phones, GPS, and cash phone at the time of the inspections. In los últimos días, in recent days, the Colombian Navy has developed a large number of operations in order to counteract a number of scourges that are being presented to us, a route of migrants who are being victims of unscrupulous people who are using unsafe boats. Only in the month of August, we have managed to seize 119 people, of which 21 are minors. The effective control together with the technological tools available for the naval institution for traffic control and maritime surveillance made it possible to identify different vessels that were making suspicious movement to the south and southwest of San Andres and in the waters of the Pescador Key and Albuquerque Key, for which in a timely manner, Coast Guard Rapid Reaction Units were deployed in San Andres in order to verify the situation. In total, so far this month, the Colombian Navy has managed to intercept seven boats with irregular migrants at sea and to locate the artisanal dwellings used for temporary shelter while also to evade authorities' controls. And today was held the socialization of a project that seeks to strengthen the entrepreneurs of the island. This is the progress project that is led by the departmental government and seeks to generate support for the entrepreneurs throughout the islands. El proyecto se trata de fortalecer los negocios. The project is about strengthening the businesses and micro-businesses of the island through three phases. First, through a general convocation. We are all over the place helping people to apply to this convocation. And we have socialization sessions. Second, it is about making a selection of the best business plans presented to us. Finally, we enter the execution phase, which consists of an education stage for the entrepreneurs. In this stage, they receive learning modules through five specialists within the project. Each specialist has an established profile and the idea is to educate the business units. After that will be the delivery of some productive assets to further strengthening. Finally, there will be a follow-up with indicators of profitability and efficiency of businesses. About the educational model, the person and one of the professionals in charge tell us. In this academic part, what we want is to give a 
In this academic part, what we want is to provide a strengthening in entrepreneurship to all our micro-entrepreneurs. What we want is that they take off and get out of their paradigm that they are many and begin to see themselves as large companies, that they know how to manage a company in all its dimensions. For that reason, the program wants to strengthen them in these skills. Those selected will learn how to start a company and how to manage the staff in charge. And in the morning, a socialization on the protocol of attention in cases of sexual exploitation and abuse was held in the department. Mondo Diverso Foundation, an entity that performs community and legal work for the Venezuelan migrant population and the LGTBIQ+, conducted socialization on care protocol in case of sexual exploitation and abuse by staff of the state institution. The activity was funded by International Cooperation, Amnesty International, Universidad Autónoma del Caribe, and Agrox Holding. Here we are going to socialize a standard operating system for the denunciation of sexual exploitation and abuse, which represents a form of human trafficking and has to do with what apart from the penal denunciation and the disciplinary denunciation. It must be denounced for the ethical report of working before the United Nations of the humanitarian personnel who provide service to the migrant population so that this does not constitute a serious fault and is sanctioned. The event was attended by the Women's and Gender Affairs Office as well as other entities that make up the Committee of Human Trafficking in the Archipelago of San Andres, World Providence, and Santa Catalina. For those who wish to report facts related to sexual exploitation and abuse, they should go to the prosecutor's office, the family police station, or the national police. And for all those interested in the academic offers of the SENA, the regional headquarters on the island of San Andres, opened a new training offer directed exclusively to its graduates. The regional Sena San Andres opens a new training offer directed only to its graduates under the technical modality so that they can complement their studies as technologists in the areas of development. We have a special call for our Sena graduates in the administrative and financial area and in the area of hotel services. All those graduates who have completed the technical administrative production and technical administrative assistance today have the opportunity to do training to become technologists in administrative management. It is an offer for our graduates. After they finish the technological and administrative management, they will be able to access more than 35 agreements we have with different universities. So we are waiting for you. Please contact us. The training offer is available from this moment. The entity invites all interested islanders to come to its facilities to learn more details about that offer of vocational training as technologists. Yesterday, our archipelago was one of the big winners at the Caribbean Media Awards, thanks to two productions of the regional channel Teleislas. Hello, Lisa and all the TV viewers who connect right now with us in Teleislas News. We have great news for all the island and the audiovisual industry because yesterday, two people from our islands win in the Caribbean Media Awards. This premiation that go between the CBU, the Caribbean Broadcasting Union Assembly. The winners was Mateo Luque as Best Sound Engineering and also Sergio Ben for Best Director, who we talked to him to tell us about how he feel about this achievement. First of all, it's a, it's a great surprise and I want to thank God, first of all, Thank God for the inspiration and thank God for this opportunity. And uh, I think this is a prize not only for me, but for the whole island. And I'm very happy. Well, well this documentary, first of all, um, the inspiration comes from God. And well, I, I always notice, um, like through the years, say, we always wait um, to people from outside to come and tell our, our history. And well, I believe that we are the one who, who bear the light. We are bearers of the light. So we have to transmit this knowledge and we have to tell our own um, stories because we are the witnesses, we deliver it. So um, we did some research about why we being African descendant, we not express the, the drum in our culture. We not have the drum, you know? So. Um, we make an investigation and then we start to make a documentary surrounding this and will this lead us to understand 
that everything was, was that happened and, and give us like this identity, this cultural identity was surrounding um, around the, the last of the drum. So it was nice to tell the history to, to our people and to see that it have, have reached so far in you know, the Caribbean and to, to get this prize now really made me happy, not only for me, but, but for us as, as, as people as Rice Island. Mateo Luque, winner as Best Sound Engineer, also give us his appreciation for this important award. Bueno, agradecido con, con este. Grateful for this recognition given by the CBU to me and the channel and the production that was part of this project. And thanks for the trust our wills to the team and the channel. The importance of this condecoration is because right now all the individual part of our island is showing internationally, specifically right now in the Caribbean. This is all the information I report from me. I continue listening to studio with more information. And at this time, we continue with news of the municipality of Old Providence and Santa Catalina with Millicent O'Neill. Thank you, Lisa, and good evening to everyone. This is all the information we have for the municipality of Old Providence and Catalina. A person wounded with a firearm and a new robbery of Steel Rebar is the report of what happened in judicial matters in the municipality. In recent days, the police reported the capture of a person who was involved in a shooting this past weekend in the Batam Hall section. The act of intolerance would have left several persons injured. In the island of Old Providence, a person has been captured who moments before would have injured with a firearm, fortunately not seriously. So far, the authorities have not given more details about this case. On the other hand, last night, more than 250 rebar rods were stolen from a construction site in Southwest Bay. With the company's motorcycle owned by the consortium, they violated the starter and turned it on, and we still don't know where they took the steel through but approximately 140 half-inch rods and 123 eighths rods were stolen. After the information of an anonymous person, it was possible to recover 145 of the last rods, with over 100 still being missing. To the community, that we do not participate and do not celebrate these acts of these indelicate people because they do not know how much they are affecting us as a company and the owners who have such a big dream of having a house and suddenly because of these acts, they cannot make it come through. The authorities are still investigating these cases. On the other hand, the project for the formulation of complementary works to the Aqueduct Master Plan, which seeks a definitive solution to the water supply, is in execution. The design of the complement to the Water Master Plan, which defines the guidelines to the solution to the water shortage in the municipality, is in 50% of its first phase. In this phase, the diagnosis, detail, analysis, and layout of alternatives for a solution of the water shortage are being carried out. Nosotros ya tenemos identificado. We have already identified the source in Freshwater Bay as the main source. A hydrological analysis was done and we already identified the maximum water that can be responsibly extracted there. We have already identified the present population and the real population of the island. We have also identified uh, the infrastructure and the electrical, hydrologic and mechanical level with all works that the system currently has. The dam in Freshwater Bay will not be enough, reason for which they are looking for other sources of water. However, it will not be Bowden. Bowden, se busco. Bowden tiene la capacidad. Bowden has a hydrological supply capacity perhaps equal to or greater than that of fresh water, but it does not have the capacity to store and take advantage during the rainy season or be able to distribute it. The impact generated by this investment with respect to the supply solutions did not compensate from the hydrological point of view. It is not viable as a supply solution. Regarding some preliminary difficulties that have already been identified are these. The phase of works will prioritize the most important issues today such as pumping difficulties, difficulties at the electrical level, difficulties with some sectorization issues. These will be prioritized and some works that must be intervened throughout the process will be defined. In November, the first phase will be finished and the socialization will be done. It is expected that by July 2023, the first phase can be implemented. 
And this is all we have for tonight for this section. Lisa, you can continue with more Tele's Last News. Good night. Thank you, Millie. And this was all for tonight with news of the municipality. We reached to the end of our broadcast. See you tomorrow at 1 p.m. with more of Tele's Last News. Good night.